Hey guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. I am here joined again by Midfinger, the world's best motor player. He came in literally number one in the world last season, just shy of six or seven thousand, excuse me, cups. You can see right here. Previous season, best season, number one. He is inside a match right now, guys. I want to go ahead and hop in. We're just gonna watch him live on ladder. This guy is just incredible, and it's funny. It's been a, a really hot topic of debate right now on social media and on Reddit. Is Mortar one of the highest skill decks in the game? Or is it one of the easiest decks in the game? And really, you could say that about almost every archetype that I share here on the channel. Inevitably, no matter what it is, uh, bait or hog or, or beatdown or it doesn't matter. People will say, this is no skill cap, Royal Giant, whatever, right? You can just keep going. So I ask you guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. What do you think is the most difficult and the least difficult archetypes in the game? And then what do you think about Mortar if, if it's not one of those two? Just let me know in the comments, guys. I would love to hear from you guys. But either way, I personally think, and don't let this cloud your judgment, I do think that play a deck like this, Mortar Bait, uh, especially to play it at a high level. I mean, anybody can play it and have some success, and I feel that way about every archetype. But I do feel like to have a lot of success with this deck, you definitely need to have a high level of skill. And what better way is there to be a high skill player than to watch Midfinger and try to replicate some of the decision-making process that he makes in these matches. So that's what we're going to do today. And did you see what he just happened there, guys, as I was blabbing on about skill caps? He was able to bait out that bar barrel of the opponent there in the left lane using just a lot of pressure and then using a bar barrel of his own. You might want to rewind there and check that out. And then as soon as he baited out that bar barrel, he knew he had Baby Dragon in hand, but he just relentlessly pressured the opposite lane there. Ended up taking the tower, obviously, against a Golem matchup. So he's not going to let up on the pressure here. He's going to keep going in with another Miner and some Bats. He's going to get that Mega Minion out of cycle and do a little bit of damage to that left tower. Now, we're going to enter into Double Elixir time, and this is the first Golem push he's had to contend with in this match. So regardless of the opponent's mistake on that Bar Barrel, I really want you guys to pay attention to how he handles this golem push because this is going to be the format that you guys need to again kind of mimic uh, his play style when defending a golem look at that you're already going to notice the minor cycled in the back let allows him to get to the rascals and the dark goblin on the other side of the defensive mortar so what did he do there defensive mortar first uh, in the low position towards the opposite Princess Tower. Then Cycled Miner had the Rascals opposite lane Dark Goblin and then just relying on the Fireball here defensively. And I can't believe it. He barely took any damage at all and he already has Rascals back in hand. Now that is how you defend against the Golem deck as a Mortar player. Just really, really well done there. And even against a beatdown matchup, hopefully we'll go against more Golem or at least some giant matchups in this video. And we can study, again, how he's able to go, not necessarily how to defend, because we saw how to defend, but how to attack when your opponent has a big tank. How to not have to rely on the Mortar and rather the Miner and the Bait elements of this matchup. So let's hop into the next match, guys. All right, guys, into match number two here. I wonder, I, I don't know, I didn't ask him. Oh, Royal Giant, another difficult matchup. Man, this could not have started better in this video today against uh, Ubi UAE, another good top ladder player here. He's going to use his minion horde despite that baby dragon. That will prevent any damage from that royal uh, giant. And then he uses a goblin gang here just to defend against that baby dragon. Goblin gang going to deny all damage from the baby dragon as well. The opponent has maybe a one elixir advantage here. And uh, let's see what he does here as far as defensively and offensively again against a royal giant matchup. You know, another kind of one of those, okay, how are we going to play this? You need kind of a blueprint and a formula here if you're going to have success. And by the way, guys, just kind of throw it out there. The Rascals version of this deck as a, compared to the Prince version, way better in my opinion. And obviously in the opinion of Midfinger as well. And if you don't like the Minor version, you can play the Macarius version with the Hog Rider. But honestly, I think this deck is a bit, uh, unless you're Macarius, I think it's a bit easier to use and a bit better. So here we go with the Minor down, trying to predict and distract that baby dragon. Didn't work out there, unfortunately, but that was a pro move. Just knowing he had baby dragon back in cycle, trying to redirect that baby dragon away from it. But this is going to be a different 
difficult push to defend here, guys. Let's see. Guards, Royal Giant, Mega Minion, but the Rascals and the Dark Goblin. Look at how much damage they're doing together. Man, they just absolutely just killed that Royal Giant. His HP was like... Brrr. Man, that was crazy. Okay, but we did take some damage. I think we took two hits on that push there. So 27-12 on the opponent's tower, 26-16. We're going to go with the defensive mortar against the furnace here of the opponent. That will take care of both distracting the fire spirits from hitting our tower and also taking care of the actual furnace. The opponent's going to respond with a royal giant in the back, and we're going to attack the tower that we're going for with the miner. We send in the dark goblin to ap apply some bridge pressure here. Here. And now we have the damage advantage, but we have to deal again with this big push coming down. A poison out of the opponent there, taking care of the rascal girls, and we're just going to fireball this all up again. Just holding that Royal Giant to two hits. Oh, that was unfortunate. I thought maybe we could hold him to one there. So now, just like that, the opponent has the advantage again. This time, they're going to use their Royal Giant on defense against our Mortar. So yeah, I don't know how he's going to win this matchup, honestly. Well, here's a nice uh, minion horde. He has baby dragon again in cycle. Is he going to use it? That's the question. He uses his last card, which is the e -Wiz, of course. Fireball comes raining down by Hazard and takes that left tower down to 1668. More importantly, we kind of baited out an additional uh, furnace there. And now we're going to try to take advantage of the Goblin Gang while the Fire Spirits are not in their spawn cycle there. So that was a really adept move there, getting to another Mortar. So the Mortar's going to come down despite that furnace. It's going to take care of that furnace. And again, we're staying aggressive here, trying to get a Royal Giant out of the opponent's hand or at least cause them to have to spend a lot of elixir on defense in the left lane we go in with another miner as well look at how relentless and aggressive we are here again smart def defense through offense right how is he going to get a big royal giant push if he has to defend every second along the way so here we go with the dark goblin putting in some work there unfortunately falls to one of those fire spirits left tower is down to 1094 we use rascals in the left this could be trouble here guys a defensive mortar we have a defensive miner here to distract that baby dragon and allow that dark goblin to do some work against that baby d now we have the zap comes down that's going to prevent a big hit from that royal giant the baby dragon gets one hit on the right tower 919 to 1094 with about a minute and 10 15 seconds here into sudden death overtime here we go mega minion solo left lane we have a furnace set up by the opponent Ooh, this is gonna be a close one here i got so worried oh, oh look at this the fireball okay the fireball lands on the furnace not the e-wiz but we don't really care so much about that e-wiz in the left lane now we know we have to defend again here comes the miner to distract that baby dragon this time instead of using the dark goblin we're going to use the minion horde minion horde is going to clean up everything here again no furnace so no fire spirits to have to worry about taking down those uh minions uh, while they took care of the royal giant so here we go again a little bit of chip damage with that spirit goblin on the left tower we're at a minute and nine eight seven remaining here in sudden death overtime what a second match here guys man poison comes down from the opponent we have a nice little elixir advantage here. We're going to send in that miner, switch up the locations. Actually, that's the same location as last time. A predictive fireball, considering he did have guards and the E-Wiz in hand. So we had to use one of them. We did not land the predictive fireball, but man, we have to defend here. Zap goes down on the left tower. All we need is one more fireball, guys. Miner used defensively. Here it goes, baby dragon. There it is, Fireball! We beat the Royal Giant deck! Man, Midfinger is a god. This guy is unbelievable. Boy, jeez, good golly. <laughs> How many dad lines can I drop on this uh, match? Okay, guys, let's go into match number three. <laughs> Gee, gosh, golly darn, that was a good match, guys. Going into match number three against Attila the Hun here from Wham Esports, a really good player. Not sure what he's running, though. And again, hopefully this is inspiring some of you guys who might not usually be mortar players. I just tend that looking at the gameplay of somebody who is this skilled with any archetype kind of inspires me. Hey, you know what? Maybe I do want to get better with that archetype. So we go in with the defensive miner here just to kind of occupy that bandit, make sure she doesn't get a charge on our left tower. Now we're going to have to contend with some minions coming down the lane. So starting out with an Ewiz, a bandit, and minions. It could be the P.E.K.K.A. Uh, spam deck. We'll, we'll wait and see here. But uh, that's my favorite deck still in the game. I'm still playing it. But Goblin Gang, okay, let's see what this guy's playing. Here comes a bar barrel in the right gonna have to respond with a, a, a hog rider here so it's actually a hog deck 
that we're going against and that's the correct mortar placement against the hog rider if you can catch it in time that way you can at least get a hit off on the tower or force the opponent to have to respond so you're going to see a lot of high defensive mortars against hog rider decks if you're mid finger so we get a couple hits on that right tower dark goblin is still so strong guys dark goblin and rascals two incredibly strong cards skarmy in the opponent's deck here as well not going to prevent us from getting at least two i think or three hits with the uh, zap comes down that's going to be a nice defensive goblin gang there that was a beautiful goblin gang right in the middle you're going to want to be very careful with the goblin gang especially against a matchup like this uh well especially against a giant matchup i hope we go into a giant matchup because when they have three spells you have to wait till the last second to drop your goblin gang when they have that log or when they have that bar barrel you want to place it in the middle there in kind of the safe zone hog's going to get ton of damage on the left tower there and the bandit charge on our right tower things are not looking good here as we go into double elixir time into this match about 50 seconds left can midfigure pull off a miracle here i don't know we go in with again the zap is out of hand for the opponent so we use a dark goblin in the back we use the goblin gang to again try to prevent some more damage on the left tower we the opponent has not showed us a big spell yet here so we don't want to just give them the tower this is not a beatdown deck you're not going to want to just go ahead and be like okay yeah take the tower i'll take the elixir advantage now it's way more of a a defensive deck where you want to be protecting your tower uh mega knight is the last card man why didn't i see that coming so a mega knight deck here man okay okay we'll see how he deals with this we have a mega knight in the right we have a hog in the left we're low on elixir but we have excuse me we're not low on elixir but we're low on the health of that mortar are we gonna prevent a hog hit yes we do the last second rascals coming in clutch for us here now we have another uh dark goblin is it gonna connect it is gonna connect there zach comes down just a little bit early there to prevent that dark goblin from latching on to one of those skeletons take the left tower down to 10 4 Fireball comes raining down. Oh no. Rascals in the nick of time again against that Mega Knight there. And the Rascals will kind of occupy that lane there also to prevent an immediate hog attack on the counter. This time a bandit does again get to the right tower. We have a Skarmy to contend with. The Spirit Goblins will clean that up. Okay, another high mortar. There's the high motor again, preventing that hog rider from getting to that left tower. Meanwhile, we get the right tower down to 714. We get one mortar hit on the left tower, but we're not worried about the left tower. It's going to be a one tower game here, obviously, at this point in the match. Another overtime match. We have the Rascals down again. We have mortar back in cycle if we need it against the hog rider in the left lane. Let's see what happens here. The opponent has Skarmy and Mega Knight in hand. Here's the Mega Knight. Fireball comes raining down again by Midfinger. That's going to take it to one Fireball away, but we have to stop this monster push first, guys. We have the Mega Knight. We have the Dark Goblin. We're low on Elixir. Here comes the Hog Rider. We need one more Elixir. We need... Okay. The Mortar pulls that Hog back up to the lane. Hog Rider is still alive. Defensive Miner to prevent that bandit charge. Zap comes down for the opponent. We have the Goblin Gang there ready in the right tower. Oh my god, he pulled it off again. This guy is amazing. All right, let's go in to match number what? Four? Match number four. See you guys in just a second. All right, guys. Man, I'm still reeling from that previous match. That was just incredible. Incredible gameplay there against really... I couldn't have asked for better matchups here in terms of the decks we're facing. Uh, a golem, a royal giant deck, and then that hog spam deck. Really interesting matchups here. So against Dark uh, Shadow Masic here from Clash 2 IT. Starts out with a prince, so he could be playing mortar or giant. I hope it's a giant deck because... Oh, perfect! Okay, because giant is another challenging matchup. Again, we're getting really lucky with these matchups here. Hopefully we win. Of course, that would be uh, good as well, right? If we lose, then it doesn't really do much for you guys. So here we go. It's going to be a Dark Goblin on that Giant Miner on our Dark Goblin. So it's a Giant Miner. Let's see what version of Giant Miner is playing right now. He could be playing... Uh, Three, just three spells. It doesn't look like double minions. They usually don't run the prince, but we'll see. Mega minion is down. It could be the boss version with the Electro Dragon. If so, that's another challenging matchup for this deck. So we get a minor and a minion on the prince there. We're going to have to contend with this prince on defense. And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier in the video, where you're going to want to wait. See how he waited to the last second on that Goblin Gang? It's to prevent, again, uh, the early prediction log out of the opponent. Just delay a second. We want to see. They're probably playing. 
playing either Log or Bar Barrel. It's probably going to be three spells and Fireball. So let's see how he deals with this. So nice spacing there on the Dark Goblin. There's the Log. So we have to be ready for that Log. Obviously, we have the Goblin Gang. We have the Dark Goblin as well. So just being very, very cautious about when and where we're using uh, uh, those two cards is going to be very important here. And again, using that Goblin Gang aggressively to bait out that Log, have it out of rotation to use on defense, is going to be something that Midfinger's not going to be afraid to do throughout the uh, course of this match. So here it comes a giant in the back. We're going to go right in with a miner. And then again, putting that pressure on with the Goblin Gang, knowing that he doesn't have that Login Cycle. That was his last card used before that giant, I believe. So miner getting a bunch of damage, chip damage on the right tower, taking down a 1667. A nice minion horde here. Zap comes down as well as the E-Drag to answer the minion horde. But we're still able to get a lot of damage off of that giant. And now the Rascal's coming in huge again. I mean, this could have been a, an incredibly difficult push to deal with, right? He had an E-Drag, he had a Miner, he had a Prince and a Giant all coming down the lane. But, you know, we take some damage, but we're able to defend pretty well. This time we don't connect with that Miner in the right. We have that Goblin Gang again. This time they're all going to die to that Log. We're going to Zap to stop that charge of the Prince, and boom, we're back at the, the Rascals. Rascals, again, you can see throughout all of these matches how huge they are coming into play here uh, for Igor. He's just so good when it comes to having five elixir when he needs it for those uh for, for any tank and in that case prince so here we go again it's going to be a e-drag down mortar's going to be down offensively notice how he's not using too many defensive mortars so far of this match has he used any i think he's used one defensive mortar so far of this match he's rather waiting till the giant is out of rotation and then opting to go for the offensive mortar forcing him to use that giant when he doesn't want to or making him play the giant behind the king tower and then attacking with the mortar so here we go again with a minor down this time he plays a giant right in front of the princess tower now he's going to have a giant and prince push coming we use rascals right smack dab in the middle there let's see is he going to use his log no, he's not going to use his log here. We take down the giant, and then we go ahead and we use that minion horde right on top of the, the target that we want to take out. In that case, it was the E-Drag, and even if he does have Fireball, he's going to need to predict that minion horde if he wants to prevent the damage from the minion horde onto the E-Drag. So now we get to the right tower with the miner getting more chip damage. We get two mortar hits. Oh, man, just like that, we just won this match, guys. I can't believe it. The Mortar got two hits, the Miner did tons of damage, and we beat another uh, difficult matchup. Wow, this guy. Let's go ahead and do one more, see if we can keep this win streak alive. All right, guys. Last match of the day against Eros Tornatora. He goes in, hey, didn't we just play? No, we played someone from the same clan. Interesting, okay. Uh, so, uh, shout out to Clash 2 uh, IT. I guess it's an Italian clan. I'm going out on a limb there. So we have a Dark Goblin setting up on defense. This is going to be some P.E.K.K.A. spam if I've ever seen it before. We have the Rascals there, but not able to protect, unfortunately, uh, that Dark Goblin. But the Goblin Gang, you might have not even noticed them. They went down so quickly, but it did uh, allow those Rascal Girls to stay alive. And we don't end up taking any damage in the left lane, at least. It looks like I was a little bit early to this match. I apologize, guys. It looks like he did a little bit of damage to our right tower when we started out with a Mortar First Play. A Mortar First Play is usually what you see Midfinger do in terms of uh, ideal first plays. That way you can see what deck your opponent is playing, identify what you're going to have to be concerned about in terms of their go-to counters to your win condition. So here we go. Bats to answer this Dark Prince. No Zap or anything in hand. And immediately we combo that with the Miner, forcing a Minions out of the opponent. Miner's going to get a little bit of chip damage again, taking that tower down to 3104. And here it comes. Let's see how he deals with this push here, guys. He's not going to use his Fireball. Instead, he's going to use his Dark Goblin and the Goblin Gang. Dang. Beautiful decision-making process here, forcing the opponent. The, the opponent's not going to be able to respond to a counterattack of a fireball, but they have to respond to that Dark Goblin and the Goblin Gang. They do so with a bar barrel, which is just fine, but again, we have our fireball in rotation here. We don't know what the last card of the opponent's deck is. Who knows with the deck that they're playing? Uh, interesting to see a deck like this so high up right now. Granted, it is very early in the season. So we get a couple hits on that left tower with the Mortar and the Miner again. That's how we ended the previous match. And here it is again, kind of a big push here. We have that high, high uh, Mortar that's going to both buy more time for the Dark Goblin and get an extra Mortar hit on that left tower while distracting that uh, that that uh, Battle Ram, excuse me, by the opponent. So here we go in with the Miner again. This is a big, nice little push, forcing a lot of Elixir defensively out of the opponent. Did I just say it's a big, nice little push? Yeah, well, 
yes, it's a big, nice little push. So here we go. It's going to be Bats against this uh, this Dark Prince again. Dark Prince. I haven't seen him in a while. And again, this defensive mortar is going to force a P.E.K.K.A. out of the opponent. Also, a bar barrel comes down. We get a Miner and some Bats onto the left tower. I think the Bat does connect. The mortar connects, and that's it. Fireball's our last card. We have it in hand, and that's going to be GG. Another victory there, man. And see how he pulled that P.E.K.K.A. with the Miner behind that tower? Very well done. Huge shout out to Igor, a.k.a. Hazard, a.k.a. Midfinger, for coming back on the channel, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out his player stats and, and profile. Thanks to StatsRoyale.com in the show notes below. Thank you for watching all the way till the end. I really appreciate it, guys. Huge shout out to Brent Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well. Thanks, and as always, take care, guys.